happening tonight in Vancouver. Get vaccinated or get left out. Indoor concerts, movies, wherever there is non-discretion activity uh, that you can go to uh, with the confidence that those around you have also taken steps to protect themselves and their families. Mandatory proof of vaccine in many places and events across the province just weeks away. I think that's kind of stupid, but... Right. It's not right. Personally, that doesn't make me feel that uncomfortable. As BC rolls out its vaccine card program this fall, there's mixed reaction to this latest move to get people immunized. When we have such a tragic loss of three very young and bright people in the community, it has a deep impact. A community in mourning after three teens are lost in a car accident over the weekend. The latest from Surrey RCMP as they try to understand what happened. This is City News Everywhere. The world is about to get a lot smaller for people in British Columbia not vaccinated for COVID-19. We are announcing the initiation of what we're calling the BC vaccine card. It means if you can't prove you're at least partially vaccinated three weeks from now and fully vaccinated October 24th, most indoor events are going to be off limits. Proof will be a record you download to your phone. A secure web link will be widely communicated ahead of September 13th. And there will also, as Dr. Henry has said, be an option for people who can't access their record online. This virtual card will be needed at virtually all what are being called discretionary events, including indoor ticketed concerts, theaters, dance, symphony and sporting events, restaurants and pubs, indoors and out, nightclubs and casinos and movie theaters, your local gym, pools and recreation facilities, indoor events, including weddings, and indoor classes like pottery and art. No one is exempt, not tourists, and not even those who can't be vaccinated. But in certain locations, proof will not be required. That includes essential services like healthcare, retail locations for children under 12, and youth recreational sports. While this move isn't permanent, it will be in place until next year. We are looking at January. Um, but we'll re be reassessing uh, on a month-by-month -month basis as we go through the fall. Any legal challenges that arise, the province says they'll take on. But with more than 80% of those 12-plus in B.C. with at least a dose, the majority they expect to be on side. Quite frankly, uh, I've heard more than anything else. Uh, what's, what's keeping you back? What's holding you up? Why are we not doing this right now? For City News in Victoria, I'm News 1130's Lisa Yuzda. Well, for the vaccine passports, I don't really mind since, you know, it ensures somehow the security of the people. It's going to be better for everyone. I like think that. that's kind of stupid, yeah. what do you but... Think? It's, not right. it's not right. BC is rolling out its vaccine card program on September 13th, limiting the access to many indoor spaces unless you can prove you're immunized. Theaters, concerts and restaurants will all be off limits to the unvaccinated. And some restaurant owners we spoke to still have questions about how it's going to work. So this is just one more hurdle, I think, in uh, in delaying our, our recovery. And, uh, you know, it's one more obstacle. Mark Von Shelwich with Restaurants Canada says he's also concerned about how restaurant staff will be able to enforce proof of vaccination. We're the hospitality industry. We like to welcome everybody. We don't want to be put in a position where we're telling some potential guests that you're welcome here, but you're not. Uh, I know that that uh, is wrong. But however, if this is the choice that we're faced with and the alternative is is closing down or going back into restrictions, uh, we will we'll do what we have to do in, in order to keep our doors open. I don't find it like it's a big deal. We're going to put it out there and we'll just, we're going to roll with the punches and we'll try to see how, what is this going to take us. Imad Yakub with the Global Group of Restaurants is more confident about supporting staff in enforcing the new vaccine card program. It, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. When we were going in with implementing everybody's temperature to be taken before entrance, I saw only one customers out of the hundreds, the thousands of thousands of thousands we did for in a two months period where we're taking everybody's temperature that he refused to take a temperature. That was one person. I understand it's a personal choice for you not to be vaccinated. Well, just like if I don't feel like I have a driver's license, I'm not going to drive. If you don't feel like it, then don't come up to establishment that's going to request that. The vaccine card program will also require people dining on outdoor patios to show their proof of vaccination. And these measures will continue until the end of January 2022. In Vancouver, Kier Junos, City News.
And the latest COVID numbers are in as we learn more about the upcoming vaccine card rollout. Over three days, BC recorded 1,711 new cases of COVID-19. Now, sadly, 16 people have died from the virus since Friday afternoon. This evening, there are 133 people in hospital. 80 of them are in intensive care. The U.S. FDA giving its full approval to Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Will that encourage more people who've been holding out to get their shots? Well, an assault charge has been laid against a Kelowna Mountie in connection with a video reportedly showing an officer dragging a young woman out of an apartment during a wellness check. This incident happened in January. Security video also shows the RCMP officer believed to be Constable Lacey Browning pressing UBC nursing student Mona Wang's head to the ground with a boot. An external review by Abbotsford Police last summer determined further review was warranted by the BC Prosecution Service. Constable Browning's first court appearance is set for September 14th. It's very difficult. Uh, these families are, I can tell you with certainty that they're shattered by what's happened. An unbelievable tragedy. After three teenage boys die in a car crash in Surrey over the weekend, the community gathers to mourn and process their grief. This was a very serious collision. Uh, I know that it also had a deep impact on first responders that attended the scene. Um, so, you know, we're working with the family. I know that they're uh, looking for answers. Flowers hockey helmets, and letters. The memorial continues to grow at the site of Saturday's devastating car crash in Surrey, which killed three teenagers. The Lower Mainland's hockey community mourning Parker Magnuson, Ronan Sharma, and Caleb Reimer, who were all youth hockey players. Surrey RCMP not ready to say what caused the crash, but that they will likely have some answers in the next few days. They have gathered a lot of data, taken measurements, uh, gathered forensic information as well as they will try Try to access the vehicle's computer to get as much information as they can on what led to uh, these three fatalities in this collision. So they're hoping to get some more information, at least preliminary information, and provide that to the families as soon as possible. We spoke to a few people attending the memorial at the crash site on Sunday, still in shock over the loss. Never do any harm to anybody. I don't know. It's just. They're all such great kids. They all deserve so much. They all are so kind to everybody. He loved flipping water bottles, doing the flipping water bottle challenge. He was hilarious. He didn't even try to be funny. He was just funny just like that. They are striving for, you know, high-level goals, and they're very dedicated, committed young men, and, and it's so, so tragic and senseless, like it's beyond me. Victim services were offered in Surrey on Monday at the Fraser Heights Recreation Center. The attendees visibly devastated. It's a challenging time for them, so having, you know, an event like today's event, the uh, Neighborhood Incidents Resource Support Team come out, and also seeing the outpouring of support from people in the community to the families and friends of those who lost their lives in this collision is really important, so um, we'll get them the information that we can when we can, hopefully as soon as possible, so they can have that piece of closure. In Surrey, Ashley Burr, City News. White paint splashed across the Kamagata Maru Memorial in Coal Harbor. What VPD are saying about the motive behind the graffiti. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration giving full approval to Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine Monday. The FDA calling this a pivotal moment for the country in the fight against the pandemic. The public can be confident that this vaccine meets the FDA's gold standards for safety, effectiveness and manufacturing quality. The FDA has reaffirmed its findings that the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. Pfizer's vaccine, which was given emergency use authorization in December, is now the first to be fully endorsed by the FDA for those 16 and up. The stamp of approval could pave the way for more businesses, schools and governments to make the shots mandatory. So now that the Pfizer vaccine has been approved, the department is prepared to issue updated guidance requiring all service members to be vaccinated. The Pentagon just announcing it's moving ahead with plans to require members of the U.S. military to get the vaccine. 
So far, more than 200 million Pfizer doses have been administered in the U.S. and hundreds of millions more worldwide, including, of course, here in Canada. If you're one of the millions of Americans who said that they uh, will not get the shot when it's, until it has full and final approval of the FDA, it has now happened. And get it today. From the U.S. president to public health officials, they hope the FDA's thumbs up will convince unvaccinated Americans that Pfizer's shot is safe and effective. Just over half the U.S. population is fully vaccinated, and a Delta-driven surge is seeing COVID deaths now averaging about 1,000 a day for the first time in months. But it's not clear just yet if the approval will erase vaccine skepticism, with opposition against the shots stronger among Republicans. Over the weekend, former U.S. President Donald Trump, a Republican, was booed at a rally in Alabama after encouraging his supporters to get immunized. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got, no, that's okay. That's all right. You got your freedoms. But I happen to take the vaccine. Moderna, by the way, has also applied for full FDA approval, still waiting for a decision on that one. And Pfizer says it will apply for full approval of its vaccines for those 12 to 15 once it has more data. Of course, for the younger set, Moderna and Pfizer both still working on their shots for those under 12. The U.S., by the way, the first country to give Pfizer full approval of its vaccine. Melissa Duggan, City News. He's dividing and misleading Canadians on a daily basis. Aaron O'Toole tells the Liberals to stop playing dirty after a post from a top Liberal candidate is flagged by Twitter. A hate crime investigation is being considered by Vancouver police after white paint was splashed across the Komagata Maru Memorial. The memorial in Coal Harbour pays tribute to hundreds of Sikh refugees who were denied access to Canada on board the Komagata Maru in 1914. More than 400 refugees were on board the boat that was refused access to Vancouver's port. Forensic teams were at the memorial Sunday before the paint was removed, and Vancouver police are working to gather evidence from people in the area over the weekend. VPD say they take cases like this seriously, and the hate crime investigation team is involved. We haven't drawn any conclusions. We don't know for certain that this was motivated by hate prejudice or bias. However, it's our responsibility, given the significance of this memorial, the cultural significance of this memorial, it's our responsibility to investigate fully to determine whether or not this was indeed motivated by hate. We haven't drawn any conclusions at this point, and um, we're in the process of collecting our evidence. Police are speaking to nearby businesses to review video camera footage of the area and have set up a tip line for anyone with information. He's dividing and misleading Canadians on a daily basis. And with their, with their social media yesterday, they're importing American-style misleading politics. I think Canadians deserve better than that. Canadians hoping for a higher-minded federal election campaign this time around will be disappointed after a top Liberal candidate's Twitter post is flagged by the service for being manipulated media. The post contains a video which shows Aaron O'Toole during the Conservative leadership campaign and purports to show him expressing his support for a public-private hybrid health care system. But O'Toole says this is just another example of the Liberals using divisive politics. Let me be perfectly clear. I 100% support our public and universal health care system. In fact, it's been the backbone we've relied on through the pandemic and the frontline workers in it. The video, posted by former Deputy PM Christia Freeland, edits out a portion of O'Toole's answer where he says universal access to health care is paramount. The video was flagged by Twitter as manipulated media and Conservative Party lawyers have written to Elections Canada calling for an investigation and for the video to be taken down. Speaking in Halifax, the Liberal leader says a full version of O'Toole's remarks were posted on a Liberal Party YouTube channel. We posted the entire interview in its entirety, uh, and I encourage all Canadians to take a look to see what Aaron O'Toole has to say about what he sees on the future of health care. We've got the Liberal Party putting out misinformation, spreading it online, 
to the point that Twitter had to flag it. Campaigning in Trudeau's own riding, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh says at a time when misinformation and disinformation is becoming more dangerous than ever, the Liberals can't do this kind of thing. A lot of the radicalization of people and online hate is based on information that's wrong, that's false, that's spread, and that creates in people this, uh, that rises, uh, that increases the sentiment of hate. This is the wrong thing to do. This is completely wrong. In Ottawa, Shao Lee City News.